I work in this industry because games and movies have always like really influenced me as a young uh, kid. Like the creativity and the work and effort like uh, that went into them. I always kind of appreciated that. So I just knew for me it was like a really good path. Alien is like my favorite movie. I saw Alien when I was like way too young, um, but it's just always kind of stuck out as one of my favorites. And then as far as video games, like I grew up on things like Super Mario and Mega Man and uh, specifically like computer games, like Myst is like my number one like video game influence. The path I took to kind of get to where I'm at now uh, was pretty interesting. So being influenced by movies and video games is one thing, but actually swinging on that uh, inspiration is actually really important. So I've actually always been really into drawing. Uh, that was kind of my, like a lot of us, that was kind of my gateway drug into art. So I drew a lot, I wanted to be a cartoonist and stuff like that. So it was really once I found video games that I realized that I could actually combine those two things together. And once I kind of had that click in my head, then it was just kind of pursuing that, that idea. So my skill sets, where I have now, I actually, I did go to school. I went to school at Noman School of Visual Effects, which really helped. But early on, I actually had uh, a lot of help from my family. My uncle, for instance, Ted Fay, was actually in the visual effects industry. So as I was a kid, he was working on things like Deep Space Nine, Star Trek, uh, Independence Day, Godzilla. So I actually knew that this kind of industry existed early on. And I was able to kind of uh, make my path towards that. So there's a lot of challenges in this industry and as an artist, uh, some of the biggest ones I feel like is knowing when your stuff is good enough and being okay if it's not good enough. So I know there's a lot of people who don't, they'll see some really amazing artists and uh, think that A, they can never do that, um, which is not true, and B, that they just won't put the effort into to, to getting there basically. So for me, like one of the main things I always talk about is just doing it. Like if you want to be a character artist, if you want to be an environment artist, it's just constantly doing it over and over and over again. I get better as an artist by really taking in other uh, artists that I like, but also trying to branch out into other influences. Uh, things like, like I said, still movies are a big influence, video games, um, even like fine art now. Like I really try and take in as much as I can and parse through that and just inspiration is huge and trying to stay inspired is really important. Um, but that being said, practice, as I said before, is super important. So not only do I work for a living doing environment art and art, I also come home and I work a lot on my own personal art to try and push things in other directions. So to get noticed by a recruiter, um, that's, that's a good point because there's Working hard is one thing, but knowing where you're at is another thing. Uh, so it's important to be able to really self-critique yourself and understand when you're at a point where you can start putting yourself out there for work um, and when you need to, to continue working on yourself. So I think self-critique and knowing, um, looking at your heroes, looking at your inspirations and really picking apart where am I at compared to where they are at um, and anywhere on that gradient is really important. So like a pivotal moment for me is, was more along the lines of um, when I first got into, the, into CG and into making video games and movies and stuff, I was really into everything. I wanted to do characters and animation and, and all of that. And actually going to Noman and seeing the people who were really good at character art made me realize that I was not very good at character art. And it actually helped guide me more towards what I was passionate about, which was environment art and I realized that I was actually better at environment art because I was more passionate about it, so I was able to actually focus a little bit better in that way. Um, uh, originally, I discovered ArtStation because there was a bunch of badass artists posting on Facebook on how they got their invite for arts, like their beta invite for ArtStation, and were just uploading their stuff. At the time, there was a pretty big, uh, hole for posting that sort of like portfolio work and so seeing these kind of influential people posting uh, actually brought me to the site pretty regularly to check it out. Uh, I use it as, um, I originally used it as like just a portfolio uh, site so I put up all my work from work and my personal work on there but lately I've been posting more blog posts and work in progress and just kind of anything that I uh, create I've been putting on there. Yeah, the community in ArtStation is pretty insane. It's grown so much from the days, like I said, that was more of like a, 
an exclusive thing. It's like, it's so huge now. So I'm constantly looking up uh, the front page, the picked things, uh, all of that trending stuff. Um, I, I look at that stuff all the time for inspiration to see where other people are at, how far people are pushing stuff and kind of what, what stuff's trending and what's not. Um, so I'm on there all the time just perusing. Like even, I'm way into environments, but I'm still just find myself looking at character stuff and prop stuff and uh, map painting and all sorts of stuff that is just beautiful and awesome. I just, so my favorite part about ArtStation is just the pure amount of badasses that are on there. There's so much good work on there. And the fact that people post a lot on there is really cool because you can see growth in people as well, which I think is really inspiring and important.